Today we have uh, Satya Tripathi who will uh, address uh, the issue of uh, how can Sharia compliance strategies fit into green investment framework? What are the opportunities open to investors? So just to kick up the discussion, Satya, how can we utilize the capital markets for climate change finance? Uh, what are the issues, the trends, the challenges that you see out there? Uh, thank you, Chito. Uh, let me uh, uh, introduce myself a little quickly because it's a strange office. Yeah. Um, uh, normally you hear organizations like UNDP, UNHCR, WFP and all, but this is different. This is an office that was created at the request of the President of Indonesia, following their desire to move very strongly into the conservation space and protecting the environment. Um, so it was set up at the request of Indonesia, which is very unusual. Um, similar offices don't exist anywhere else in the world. So to that extent, it's a very unique thing for Indonesia to have this office. It's a partnership of 10 UN organizations uh, coming together to create this office called UN ORCID. Very interestingly named ORCID uh, also signifies conservation and all, but it actually is an acronym. And uh, I, I've been appointed as the head since 2011, so I came and set it up, and, and I've been a part of it all through. Uh, very exciting to uh, be here. Uh, uh, thank you uh, to the organizers for inviting me. Um, I want to make two, three points very quickly on this question. Um, but before that, my apologies to the audience, because it has to be a very brave person that stands between a hungry audience and their lunch. <laughs> but uh, forgive me, <laughs> I have to do my part for the next 10, 15 minutes, so please bear with me. Um, so coming back to the very important question, as you know, you know the, the whole climate change conversation has been about, sadly about, for a long time, historical responsibility, you know? Who's responsible, who pays whom? But unfortunately, that's only 30% of the conversation because, as we know, the global GDP is about 30% public sector and 70% private sector. So the private sector has really not been in the conversation. I mean, they've been a part of the conversation, but not the most significant part of the conversation, which should have been from the word go. Uh, it wasn't the case. Um, now, of course, there's a lot of conversation about there's the Green Climate Fund and there's this whole idea of $100 billion being put forward by developed countries to be used in developing countries by 2020, and then the Paris Agreement now, which has further strengthened that notion. But that's a drop in the ocean. That's not going to make things work. And, and just to, I'm not trying to scare anybody here, but uh, if you have looked at the emissions gap report or the INDCs that actually form the foundational basis for the Paris Agreement, you know, the world's total carbon budget before we go through, go, go tipping to the other side where we cannot come back is 2,900 gigatons of carbon, of which by now we've already spent close to 2,140 gigatons. So we've left only 740. And actually, if you go with the INDCs uh, and implement that by 2030, we would already be beyond the tipping point. So it is a no-brainer that we have to do much more than what the Paris Agreement signifies. That's why the Secretary General repeatedly points out that it's a great starting point. It's a great agreement, but it's a great starting point. We need to do much, much more. Um, Last year, in the Addis Ababa Conference, Financing for Development, um, the Secretary General mentioned very emphatically that business can be a great power for good. And then of course, he outlined a lot of things. But the one particular thing that I would like to highlight here is socially responsible investment, or what we in the UN call uh, PRI, Principles of Responsible Investment. Now about 1,300 companies and institutions have signed up with about $45 trillion of assets in play. But the sad thing is that since we are talking in a regional context, in the Southeast Asia region, as speaker after speaker have mentioned, SRI is absolutely minimal. It's like in a few billion dollars, not even existing, uh, something, not even something that you would like to mention in a serious conversation, unless you are, of course, lamenting about the lack of SRI. That's something that needs to change. And, and I think we all need to focus, the, the sooner we focus on that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I, I was very pleased to 
I hear the uh, CIMB CEO talking about uh, marrying both because they are not so different. They are different, but there are many uh, lines that interface with, with Sharia compliant finance and SRI. And to the extent that we can bring them together, um, create a partnership of the virtuous that are really interested in social good. Um, and, and at the end of the day, you know, it's economics 101. Whether you're talking about the conventional business model of capitalistic economics, which is about stocks and flows, you have capitals and you have investment and you have returns. Same with nature. You cannot keep drawing on your capital without regenerating it, without getting it back. That's how we are here. Because we have somehow believed that nature can keep giving incessantly without any problems. That doesn't exist. So let me stop there.